Welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. The title to today's program is The Bible and Science. Now, we're not talking about ethereal concepts speculative in nature. We're talking about tangible, viable, and verifiable tenets of scientific research. We're in the midst of a grandiose arena, in fact, a replication of the Palace of Ahasuerus. And uh, in this replication, we have uh, the Book of Esther. That Book of Esther describes what occurred in that palace in absolute nobility. But not only do we have the Book of Esther, we have the entire array of the entire Old Testament scriptures, all of them. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Lamentation, Jeremiah, uh, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. In 17 scrolls, all 39 books of the Old Testament are here. I want this audience to know this is the only place on earth at present where all ancient Hebrew scroll manuscripts, parchment manuscripts, are in place at one time. Professor Gary Zimmerman, a dear friend of mine, has spent over eight years researching this, traveling essentially the globe throughout Russia, the Ukraine, China, Europe, the Middle East, Israel, Yemen. A foundation commissioned him to amass all 39 books. And he found that there was no place on earth, no university, no museum, no synagogue, no Geniza, where all 39 books were in one place at one time until now. Here they are on the set in preparation for this program. Now, the New Testament is interwoven in the Old Testament as one complete whole. And at the end of the New Testament, the creator, the author, who directed the stroke of every pen, Jesus Christ said, don't add one tittle. Don't take anything away. If you add anything to it, I'll add to you the plagues. If you take anything away, I'll take your part out of the book of life. It is forever settled. It's settled on all matters of life and doctrine. It's settled in all the scientific enterprise. So we're going to investigate that today. And in the process, I want to welcome my dear friend, Professor Gary Zimmerman. Gary, welcome back to the program. Thank you. It's a privilege to be with you today. You have performed over the years a noble effort in representing uh, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in representing your heritage as a Jew. And, and I, I've looked for Jewish heritage, and I can't find any in mine. I've looked so far, I've found some outlaws, so I'm not looking any further. I'm just leaving that up to God. You are the one who amassed all of this under the auspices and commission of a foundation. And I want to thank you on behalf of creation in the 21st century, TBN, and this global audience. You performed a noble work. Well, thank you very much. I believe you're carrying... A manuscript that is among these scrolls, but a separate second copy. Pretty close to your heart, aren't you? Well, it, it is a very sad book. It's the Book of Lamentation. And I, I brought this, uh, this this morning so that we could show it in relation to this pot that you brought. All right, so let's look at the pot and give a bit of the history. Uh, Gary, what does Lamentation reveal to us? What's the lament about? Well, it's the judgment of God upon the nation of Israel yes. and the destruction of, of the temple and basically Israel for, for quite a few years. Yes. And you made mention that, uh, that you'd, you'd found this pot in relation to the destruction of Jerusalem. That is correct. Several years later than, than when this scroll was written. Some very personal friends of mine, Ellie Shukran, Ronnie Reich, the two head archaeologists for the excavation of... Ir David, the city of David, Hezekiah's uh, pool, Hezekiah's tunnel, the uh, pool where Solomon was anointed king. Gary, I, our team helped to excavate 
adjacent to that pool before it was discovered. Then the pool of Siloam, at the bottom of the pavement from the temple, the western pavement through down which the blind man, uh, John chapter 9, the blind man walked, washed in the pool of Siloam, where, uh, and Jesus had uh, made spittle in the clay, put it on his eyes, he washed, was healed immediately. Then he was qualified to go up to the temple and offer sacrifice. Mm -hmm. As you know, prior to that, being blind, he was not permitted in the temple. Had to have his father or someone else represent him. But now, he could personally go in, being a man of age, go in and represent himself before God and the sacrifice. Now, those sacrifices were offered and the ashes and the blood that may not have been consumed were put in a drain. That drain was sacred. Those ashes had been offered to God prior to the burning of the fire. And that drain led from the temple down to the pool of Siloam. We didn't know until a few months ago, under the pavement over which you walked. What a beautiful way to walk over the sacred drain. That drain led into the water reservoir, not into the pool of Siloam, but even the dust and, in, and the ashes were sacred, led into the reservoir that passed the Pool of Siloam and opened into the Garden of the Kings in the Kidron Valley. That's the background. Those were during the glory days. But 70 AD came. Titus Vespasian, the general who later became emperor, destroyed Jerusalem. And in the burning of the temple, once the Jews saw that their temple was burned, in consequence of fulfilled prophecy from the book you hold in your hand. That's not the original, but it is an ancient copy. Well, they're called originals. The Ben-Gurion Institute for Microfilming Hebrew Manuscripts calls these original manuscripts. The only original original would be an original Moses or an original Isaiah. Which we do not have. Th nobody has those. But these are original copies of those. Yes. And, and priceless. Absolutely. Well, in consequence of that prophecy, Titus Vespasian sacked the city, burned it, and burned the temple. Josephus records that 3,000 Jews who had stayed near the temple because of their reverence for that holy site got into that drain. It was the only place left. Got into the drain and headed down, hoping to escape out through Kidron, or Henan valleys. Mm -hmm. But they were heard, detected by the Roman soldiers. I've personally seen the excavations. We were a part of examining and sifting through that drain. We were the first entity permitted to do so, the Creation Evidence Museum. Mm -hmm. Subsequent to that, I saw where the archaeologists in Israel had uncovered the stones that were pulled up by these Romans, getting to these 3,000 Jews Josephus writes about. Each of these Jews held a pot. Now this is the largest one. This was presented to you in token of appreciation for all you've done and for this amassment. They held a pot with all the food they had for survival. But they were detected by the Roman soldiers who broke up the pavement and burned these Jews alive. Here you see residue of foodstuff burned. Here you see on the back to the camera the burning residue from that destruction. Would this be about the size of an omer? Probably so, but some of them were smaller. Okay. So okay. we would simply have to say mm -hmm. probably. Right. Okay. That is a special gift to you. Well, I certainly appreciate that. I, I know you do. I wish I had excavated it. I did not. But it was excavated by a personal friend of mine. And through the agent of the Department of Antiquities, we were able to legally and properly acquire it. Mm -hmm.